Good morning, this is Heather from WeddingsbyHeather.com and the Flourish Academy. During a typical week, I host about four to six photographers here at my home for mentoring sessions and we cover a variety of topics. And as a certified life breakthrough life coach, I also have life sessions typically thrown in there. These are, some are in person, some are on the phone. But anyway, I thought it might be useful if I took some of the things that we talk about throughout the week and just pulled a quick tip for us to discuss. And today, I was, um, so it's Monday, so this is from last week's mentoring sessions, but I was talking with a friend about Sigma and Tamron lenses. So she was asking me when I shot Canon and when now that I shoot Nikon, do I have uh, any thoughts about those third-party lenses? And let me put this disclaimer out there first by saying I have never shot with a third-party lens, Sigma, Tamron, or otherwise. So I really do not have any data in terms of uh, are they the same? Do they have any issues? I can't compare because I've not done any testing with them. And by the way, if I did, my testing would have to be pretty scientific, meaning I shoot, I would shoot the same camera body, the same scene, the same settings over and over and over to see if there was a difference in the lenses. So I have no data. <laughs> However, she was asking my opinion on those lenses. And I will say this, I have a lot of friends, professional photographers that shoot with Sigma and Tamron and love them and have no issues whatsoever. Now obviously the benefit is cost because a Sigma or Tamron 70 to 200 is significantly less expensive than the Nikon or Canon versions. And she was asking, you know, what my thoughts were, had I ever used them, obviously I have not. But I have this, okay, it's just strange. I would consider myself a lens snob and I just never even explored the option. Now, I, I think for me, that's because I feel that people are paying me a lot of money to photograph their wedding. So I just never wanted to take any chances. Not that there's necessarily a risk in using those lenses. I just always like to buy the best. That's just my... Um, how I consume products. So if you're okay with a less expensive lens and it works great for you, I have no problem with it. I just don't have the data to test it, but I have not used any of these. So what I would love to hear from you is, are you using third-party lenses and what has your experience been? Because I have not used them. Along those same lines, a question came up about filters that go on the front of your lens. I had filters on my lenses when I shot Canon and uh, a polarizing filter in particular, and I just thought that it was okay. I didn't think that it really made a, a significant difference to the lens, but in my mind, I kept that filter on there to protect the lens. But then at some point I started to feel like if there was anything between my lens and the subject that it could impede focus. That is all in my head. I have no proof of that. So I removed the filters and I felt like my photos were more in focus. But again, I do not have data for that. That was just a feeling I got that there, anytime there was something between my lens and the subject, there could be an issue. Now, I kept those filters very clean and I used them for, I don't know, I think maybe um, probably a season, a year before I thought, mm, I'm just not feeling this, so I sold them. Again, I don't have any problem with filters, but uh, I just didn't like using them. So I don't shoot third-party lenses and I don't use filters. That is completely a personal preference. If it's working for you, I would love for you to post in the comments and let others know how how it's working and what you're using. Now, Mandy says she uses a Tamron Tamron and love them. When I was uploading a few years upgrading, sorry, a few years ago, it was better for my budget. However, I recently been only buying Nikon lenses and will most likely start to replace my Tamrons with Nikon. Which Tamrons are you using, Mandy? Please let us know and the price difference. So, I am assuming you're probably at least talking about the 70 to 200, correct? It's just so expensive. The Nikon version is sitting around 2,000, 2,200, 2,100 right now. That's a lot of money. And I know that Tamron and Sigma are significantly less. Uh, I would, if I were gonna test these, I would like to rent them 
and see what it's like. Oh, you have the 70 to 224 to 70. Hey, could you maybe bring those over someday? Oh, maybe we could test those. We'll have like a little date where we put those lenses on the same bodies and we test them in the same scene. Um, and it was only $900 or 70 to 200. Can we do that? Uh, that would be great because then I wouldn't have to spend the money to rent them because it would just be for testing purposes to see how they feel and perform. And specifically, I like to see how they perform in very low light. And yes, you could bring them today. Mandy's headed over here today for the website workshop with Leanne. So that would be great. I just want to get a feel for them. Uh, Jody says she went with the Sigma 35 Art, which I hear a lot of people love. I rented it and loved it and heard so many people rave about it. And it's great, the art series. Okay, um, Jody, next time we're together, can you bring it with you? <laughs> I'd love to see it and play with it and maybe post a photo using that lens in these comments so that we can see it. Uh, Heather says she would love to know the outcome of that testing. And she wants the 70 to 200, but right, the price tag is really very high. But with anything in business, here's another bonus quick tip. I didn't plan this one, but I am always profit forward. So in my mind, when I want something like a particular lens, I find out the price and I think to myself, how can I get someone else to pay for this? That is, how many sessions would I need to photograph in order to earn the money to pay for that lens? So that's how my mind is always thinking. Kelly says they love the Sigma art line. They have the 35 and 50. Got rid of the Canon 50 because of this lens. Really? That Sigma art 50 is a 1.4. Yes, what is the price tag on that lens, if you please? Mandy says most of all her wedding portraits of the bride and groom. Yeah, me too, 7,200, but yours is with that Sigma. So, wow, your photos of the bride and groom are beautiful. So have you noticed, I mean, obviously you have not, or you would have said something, but you haven't noticed any sharpness issues or focus issues. It focuses just as fast. Yeah, when we test it, you'll be here today in bright light. We need to test it in a dark church. You know, like push the limits of the gear, like super high ISOs, slow shutter speeds, and see how they perform. Kelly says, yes, the 50 Sigma Art 1.4 is around $800. Not super cheap, but cheaper than the Canon L. Yeah, the Canon... 5212 was my favorite Canon lens, and I want to say it was around 1200. Is that correct? I can't remember. Sarah has the Sigma 70 to 200 and loves it, and the Tamron 28 to 75 and does not like it. What is it about the Tamron that you don't like, Sarah? Please let us know. And how much did you spend on that Sigma 70 to 200? Just curiosity. I'm trying to find, you know, for especially for people starting out, I'm trying to find the best lens for the best price that will perform how they need it to perform. A lot of us photograph in low light, and we also need a pretty shallow depth of field, so most of us love 2.8 on the 70 to 200, which is why the 4.0 won't work. Mandy says she's never had an issue with focus on the 70 to 200, but the 24 to 70 has a slight delay on the focus, but it doesn't really bother me. Yeah, it's a little bit slow, but not a problem as long as you're getting the shot and it's sharp. Um, oh, Kelly says she almost forgot. They have the 24 1.4 art and love it. I owned uh, the 24 1.4, was it the 35? Canon, it was one of his Canon. I can't remember. It was a 24. I owned it. Very briefly, I just found it so wide. Um, I know you photograph a lot of weddings. What do you use that lens for? I used it in the church during the ceremony, and I also used it in the reception, but I'm kind of a tight shooter, so I tend to go for that 70 to 200 over my wide lenses. Even um, when I shot Canon, the 16 to 35 versus the 14 to 24 on the Nikon, I don't use those lenses very often. I have them. Uh, but again, they're for wide shots of my venues. I don't really use them um, for any people photos, per se. People are in the photo, but because on a full frame it warps, yes, you can correct that warp, of course. But um, I'm just, I like to shoot tighter. That's a personal preference. I think everybody has a different style. My Hannah likes to shoot very wide. She's a wide shooter and she gets in close. But then I tell her, well, everybody's face goes woo. So you have to be careful with that. <laughs> Good morning, Raina. How are you today? How are the girls this morning? I hope everybody is excited for Monday and their week. And a quick life coaching tip is to make sure that you find the joy and happiness and everything. Because what you focus on 
you will feel and what you give your energy to will grow so if you have a lot of stress or you have anxiety and you focus on those things they will only get bigger so you have to be grateful and find joy in little things and then those things will grow as well so oh hi puppy i hope you guys have a great week i'll see you tomorrow